Hey guys, Ray from bellbondbidsnow.com. Um, I'm not telling anyone to try to practice law on their own or anything like that, but if you've made bond and now you're, out, you're working to defend yourself, I've talked about this in a little short, but I want to expand on it a little bit. Uh, subpoenas, from my years of experience, um, subpoenas are one of the tools that are just rarely used or not used nearly as enough as they should be. Basically, um, a subpoena is a hammer of a tool and it doesn't normal normally it doesn't even require uh judges to intervene the only time a judge intervenes is if the person doesn't appear or if the documents are refused but other than that the clerk signs off and it's a powerful tool it requires work on part of the attorney because they have to do paperwork and go to the clerk and describe what they need or the witness that they're trying to obtain and so Unfortunately, I can just say a lot of uh, attorneys in my industry, they just don't deal with it. Um, but anyways, uh, basically, there's technically more, but the three main types of uh, subpoenas are basically, as you can see there, there's documents or physical evidence. You can get a subpoena to somebody, medical records, internet records, banking records, photos, counseling records, employment records. Now, there's all these other type of Texas laws that sometimes make those items protected, but I would venture to say many times, a lot of times they'll just mail them to you. Uh, sometimes they will uh, go to court and they will bring it to you and let you review it. Now, technically, they don't have to give you copies, but they have to let you review them. Now, if they uh, they believe they fall under, you know, it's a protected item because it's medical records or whatnot, uh, they will deny and then you'll have to go to court and then have a hearing and a judge will counter the two, uh, the protective law versus the needs of the criminal defendant and uh, we'll make a decision. But once again, even all that aside, from a personal experience, more often than not, they will just provide those documents or they will actually go to court and they will let you review those documents and you take your notes. And then on the day of trial, you bring them back on another type of subpoena and you know how to, uh, you know what exists out there and you can question them about it and show a juror about that. So, and going back, remember most of these subpoenas other than the third one down there, which we'll get to, are you can schedule them well ahead, months ahead, any court date that the court is open, months ahead of a trial court date, you can have them come in and at your leisure, you can start reviewing those documents or your attorney can do it. And again, going back to what I said, a lot of times they'll just mail them. So um, the second one, I talked about is documents at trial, which is basically where they come to uh, court on the trial date and they actually bring those documents and hopefully used another subpoena before so you already know what's in those documents if they haven't already given you a copy. And then the third is basically the same thing, which is a witness at that trial. So anyways, I hope that helps. Um, once again, this is just trying to give you a little bit of knowledge so you can discuss these issues with your attorney and together try to make to decide a good plan if it's worth trying to utilize what I consider very powerful tools that unfortunately most attorneys don't use. All right. Hope this helps guys. Bye-bye.